Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our literature unit again, day two. Remember, in day one, we talked about The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, and we summarized the story. You might be familiar with this story. A few years ago, there was a trilogy of movies about The Hobbit. So today we're going to talk about the author J.R.R. Tolkien, or I've also heard his name pronounced Tolkien. Okay.、Um, well, I spent some time a couple of years ago looking up on the internet the different ways his name was pronounced because it seemed like everybody was saying it differently, and、mm. also it was kind of like J.、Um, J.R. Rowling or Rowling. J.K. J.K. There、yeah. we go. J.K. the The lady who wrote all of the、uh, Harry Potter books. Same thing, you know. You hear different pronunciations of her name too.、Uh, J. R. R. Tolkien or Tolkien, though he's actually、um, no longer with us. He passed away, so he lived a while ago.、Um, we're going to talk about his life and、uh, some of his work. But first, guys, as we always do, we're going to read through today's lesson. The Hobbit was written by J. R. R. Tolkien. A professor of the Anglo-Saxon language, who became one of the most respected authors in the fantasy genre, born in South Africa in 1892, Tolkien moved to England at a young age. As a child, he enjoyed both fairy stories and the natural world, but his greatest love was languages. He was a soldier during World War One. An experience that would shape aspects of his later writing, such as his descriptions of landscapes. To distract himself from the horrors of war at this time, he began to create imaginary languages and the world in which they were spoken. Tolkien was marking exam papers in the early 1930s when he came across a blank page and was inspired to write, "In a hole in the ground." There lived a Hobbit. By 1932, he had finished the story, which he thought of as a long fairy tale for young readers. His close friends and students also enjoyed the tale, which led to it being offered to a publisher. And The Hobbit hit the shelves in 1937. It was a huge success, and the publisher soon asked for a sequel. In response. Tolkien offered some stories from Middle Earth, the imaginary world he'd been creating for years. However, the publisher wanted more stories about hobbits. Tolkien then began work on *The Lord of the Rings*. This not only wove the world of *The Hobbit*, which Tolkien had conceived as a totally separate story, into the Middle Earth legends, but also resulted. In what many deem to be the best fantasy book series ever written, *The Hobbit* and *The Lord of the Rings* have influenced so many writers since then that Tolkien is now considered the father of modern fantasy literature. Okay, everybody. Let's discuss the contents of today's lesson. Again, this is about the author himself, J.R.R. Tolkien, and *The Hobbit* was written by J.R.R. Tolkien, a professor of the Anglo-Saxon language, who became one of the most respected authors in the fantasy genre. Okay, so that's the author's name there, J.R.R. Tolkien. And、uh, he was a professor of a language that existed in England before the Norman Conquest, I believe, which took place in 1066. And I guess a lot of the Anglo-Saxon language still exists today. I think half of the words in modern English come from Anglo-Saxon or the language of England before the Norman Conquest. But if you were to go back to England and try to talk to those people, you would probably have a great deal of difficulty. But in any case. He was a master at this language. He was a professor of the Anglo-Saxon language, and of course, lots of people respected him as an author, especially in the fantasy 
genre.、Mm -hmm. So when you write books, of course, you have different kinds of books, different genres. Like mystery books, that's a genre. Romance novels, that's a genre. Adventure, that's a genre. And fantasy, that's a genre. It's similar to science fiction, but、uh, fantasy is more about、uh, fantasy creatures、mm -hmm. living in magic lands and lots of magic. Instead and, of technology, right? Ah,、uh, exactly. Yeah. So there are some other、uh, books in this. I'm only familiar with the, this one. Harry Harry Potter. I guess Harry Potter counts、totally. as the fantasy、yeah. genre.、Uh, the sword, the sword of Shannara, or something like that, was kind of similar to、mm. this particular series of books, which was popular in the seventies. But of course, nowadays there are lots of different、uh, fantasy novels out there that you can check out. Uh, this reminded me of、uh, the movies and the fact that they、uh, speak languages that are made up in the Hobbit. Right?、Mm. The Hobbits have a different type of language. The dwarves do. And I remember interviews with the actors that starred in the movies. They talked about how many hours they spent learning this、uh, language that the author had created, Tolkien or Tolkien.、Uh, his name is also pronounced that way as well, Tolkien. So. He was born a long time ago, you guys, 1892.、Uh, but he grew up in England, and as a child, he enjoyed both fairy stories and the natural world. Both of these things were interesting to him. But his greatest love was languages.、Um, I have a friend like that, actually.、Uh, he speaks very well, several languages. He just is fascinated with language. So he was a soldier、uh, during World War One. Um, and that experience would shape aspects of his later writing. That happens a lot to、uh, men and women who are involved in war.、Uh, it's such an awful experience, and they see such horrible things that it influences their life, of course, later. And especially if they're writers or artists, they tend to use that experience to come up with things,、uh, whatever their art is producing. So he would、um, use that experience. Um, in his writing, such as his description of landscapes or what the place looked like,、um, a landscape is just an area of the world that you're looking at. It could be a mountain landscape or an ocean landscape,、um, where you're looking out and seeing. Uh, just some beautiful view. It could include something that people have built. It doesn't have to be just natural, you know, things that the earth produced.、Uh, but he had really good descriptions of landscapes. Yep, the、uh, general descriptions of different land formations in different places. So you might describe different landscapes in Taiwan here in Hualien. Of course, you got the ocean landscape with the mountains and the cliffs. Beautiful. In Nanto, the landscape is kind of mountainous with lots of forests. And in Yunlin,、uh, the landscape is more flat with lots of farmland and stuff like that. You get the idea.、Mm -hmm. So he was fighting in World War One and probably stationed in different places, and he would. Observe the landscapes there and、uh, describe them in his writing. And to distract himself from the horrors of war at、mm. this time, he began to create imaginary languages and the world in which they were spoken. So indeed,、uh, it's probably difficult for most of us to imagine the horrors of war,、uh, killing your fellow human beings and being in extreme pain and stuff like that, and crying out for your mama and things like that.、Uh, so he experienced those things. So. So he had to save himself; otherwise, he would have gone crazy. So he began to imagine things. He began to create imaginary languages, and then the world in which they were spoken. So, if something is imaginary, that means it doesn't really exist.、Uh, of course, kids are creating imaginary worlds all the time, and the verb, of course, is to imagine. And imaginary, of course, is the adjective form. Imaginary languages, languages that don't really exist. Yeah, he makes them up, which is so clever, and I think they make a lot of sense because they were talking to the actors and they felt like you know they knew what they were really saying when they were making the different、uh, sounds and words that he'd created. So we've got、uh, Tolkien or Tolkien. He's marking exam papers in the early 1930s 
when、uh, he comes across a blank page. So he's busy marking exam papers. It's just another way to say he was grading tests. So、uh, exam papers, yeah. In England, a lot of their tests would include essays,、um, and that's what he was probably doing at the time to mark an exam paper is to grade a paper. And when he was doing this, it was the 1930s. He、uh, came across a, bl- a blank page as he was doing this. To come across something means you didn't plan to see it or to meet someone somewhere. You just happen to come across. So、um, it just arrives, you know, in, or just is it. There, right in front of your view, even though you didn't、uh, necessarily plan to see something or to meet someone,、um, I came across a really beautiful old dress uh, that was uh, sewn in the early 1900s. I didn't plan on seeing it or finding it; it just showed up. It was wonderful. So he came across a blank page, and I guess it's pretty boring to grade test papers. And as a professor, he was、uh, kind of inspired. By seeing this blank page, and he started to write the very beginning of、uh, the Hobbit, that novel. In a hole in the ground, there lived a Hobbit,、um, and of course, he's making up what a Hobbit is. I don't think the Hobbit existed before、uh, Tolkien invented it.、Uh, yeah, when I looked this word up in the dictionary, it said it was invented by Tolkien himself. <laughs> so that's how this book started. In、yeah. a hole in the ground, there lived a Hobbit,、mm. and by 1932, he had finished the story, which he thought of as a long fairy tale for young readers. So he wrote this book based on that first sentence there. So in the year 1932, which was、uh, between the First World War and the Second,、yeah. he actually finished the book. He finished the story. And he thought of it as well. You know, it's a it's a fairy tale, but it, it's very long, and it's for young readers. Of course, nowadays we have books for young readers. They're not too difficult to read, so young people, maybe about fourteen years old or so, give or take a couple of years,、mm. can read it without much difficulty. Yeah, I would usually think young readers are from maybe what nine to fourteen, something like that.、Mm. Uh, his close friends and students also enjoyed the tale or the story, and、uh, that led it to being offered、uh, to a publisher. I'm sure you know he thought, "I'm just writing this for my friends and family. No big." Deal, but、uh, if something's good, you want to encourage your friends to go ahead and see if they can get something published, and that's what they did here. And of course, it was accepted, and the Hobbit hit the shelves or began to be sold、uh, out there in bookstores in 1937. And I'm not surprised. It says here it was a huge success, and the publisher soon asked. For a sequel, a sequel is when you make、uh, when you write a book, some sort of fi- work of fiction. So it's a novel, and if a sequel comes, it's、uh, like book two, same characters, and the story just continues. So that's.、Uh, That's what every author hopes happens. You know that the publisher likes the book so much that they ask for a sequel.、Um, we use that word too when we're talking about movies. You know, Star Wars had、um, a lot of sequels that followed. We're going to take a break right now, guys. Listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to can you. Continue talking about our author, J. R. R. Tolkien, or J. R. R. Tolkien. Hello, my name is Shelby. 今天的文章主要是关于《哈比人》这本书的作者 J.R.R. Tolkien。Tolkien 呢，他喜欢大自然和神话故事，也曾经参与过第一次世界大战。我们来看第一段的第四句：他是一个 soldier 士兵，在第一次世界大战 earn experience。Experience 经验的意思，它呢放在逗点之后呢，所以变成了一个同位语来修饰前面的句子。其实同位语是一种相当于省略 which was 的形容词短句。好，在这个经验后面呢，它附带着一个 that 形容词短句来修饰，其中的 shape 是当做动词形成的意思 ，aspects 是方面。在各方面就用 aspects of something， 所以这句就变成修饰他之后写作的各方面。Such as， 例如说，他的描述 of a landscape， landscape 是乡野或者风景，它当成动词的时候表示美化。He landscapes his property with the trees， 就是他用树啊来美化他的。
房产。请到第五句 ，to distract。Distract 转移注意力，通常这个字后面会加一个介系词 from， 从哪里转移他的注意力，也可以用同义字 divert d i v e r t 来代替。为了要转移对战争的恐惧啊，他开始创造了 imaginary languages and the world。imaginary 是虚构的，不存在的。有另外一个形容词 imaginative。也是与想象有关，可是 imaginative 是富想象力的 ，imaginary 是虚构的，这两个字完全不一样的意思。好，在后面的地方 ，in which 是一个子句来形容前面这个世界 ，in which 也可以用关系副词 where 来代替，在这个世界中，这些语言被使用着。那哈比人故事是怎么开始的呢？我们来看第二段的地方。战争结束了 ，Token 呢就回到了故乡，开始教书。第一句，他正在 marking exam papers 的时候 ，marking 这个 mark 当做动词表示批改。他在批改这些考试卷的时候呢，当他 came across came across 是发现或者是偶遇，有好几个同义片语啊，例如 bump into。Run into 或者是 run across 都有相同的意思。他偶然看见一个空白卷，然后呢 ，inspired 被启发，写下了 in a hole。hole 是洞穴的意思，是一般常见的写法。另外有一个 pit 是比较深，冬天很冷，在外面取火的火坑就叫 fire pit。A cave 就是指又黑又深的山洞了。在这地洞里面住着哈比人。投影开始了哈比人的故事。我们到第三句，他的朋友啊，学生呢，都很喜欢这个故事。而这样子的状况呢 ，which 来形容就是指整件事情 ，led to 导致于他们提供给出版商来出版。好 ，led to 是 lead to 习惯用语，它的同义片语还有 bring about、result in， 甚至 give rise to。都同学可以拿来作为参考，表示相同的意思。接着后面的句子，然后这本《哈比人》这本书啊，就 hit the shelves， hit 碰触 shelves 是书架，所以呢，它表示已经可以上架购买了。Hit 呢，还有类似的用法，比如说 hit the road。The road 是马路，撞到马路，也就是说我们要开车上路喽。所以在一九三七年，市面上开始有《哈比人》这本书。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, let's continue talking about the Hobbits. Well, we're actually talking about the author,、yeah. J.R.R. Tolkien. And in response to the request from the publisher to have a sequel, Tolkien offered some stories from Middle Earth, the imaginary world he'd been creating for years. So yes, indeed, the Hobbit takes place in a world called Middle Earth.、Uh, if you buy the book, at least when I did,、mm-hmm. when I was、uh, in, I guess, high school or so,、uh, there's a map inside there of Middle Earth,、uh, yeah. you know, where all these、yeah. countries and all these lands are. <laughs> so he invented this. This land called Middle Earth, and、uh, that's what he offered、uh, some stories from that place, but、uh, actually not、uh, the whole trilogy of the Lord of the Rings, at least not yet. Nope. However, the publisher wanted more stories about hobbits. He just thought that that character was so cute.、Um, they are kind of cute, I think. So、uh, Tolkien or Tolkien then began work on the Lord of the Rings. So the Lord of the Rings actually followed the Hobbit.、Um, I never got into the Lord of the Rings, although those movies were quite popular in my family. I know. Um, especially my nieces and nephews, they love those movies. So this not only wove the story or the world of the Hobbit,、uh, which Tolkien had conceived as a totally separate story, into the Middle Earth legends, but also resulted in what many deem or consider to be the best fantasy book series ever written. This is a really long sentence, so let's take a look at this. So if you're weaving stuff, that's a verb meaning you take several different parts. 
parts or threads, and you put them together, and it produces something beautiful.、Um, Fabric before we had machines,、uh, fabric was made or material was made by people actually weaving threads back and forth. It was very very tough work. Or、um, a lot of girls have braids where you can weave the hair back and forth and braid it. Wove is the past tense of the verb to weave.、Um, it's one of those、uh, irregular verbs. Sorry about that. Wove. So they wove, or he wove,、uh, the world of the Hobbit in with all of those. Uh, stories he invented from Middle Earth, and that、uh, turned into the Lord of the Rings. Right. So he wove the world here. He created the world, but because it involved lots of things, different places, different、yeah. creatures,、uh, we were using the word weave here in the past tense. Wove. Lots of things were involved,、mm -hmm. and、uh, of course, he conceived it as a totally separate story. So conceive here means you come up with an idea. I guess that's part of the.、Uh, is that the Constitution conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are equal? Actually, that's a part of the Gettysburg Address. But、uh, yes, conceive basically to invent something to create something. To conceive, we also use it to talk about a woman becoming pregnant. She conceived and will be, you know, having a child in nine months. So yeah, he conceived uh, uh, this as a totally separate story,、um, but he then wove it into the Middle Earth legends. A legend is a story that isn't necessarily true, probably isn't, because some of the legends that we hear are about fantasy things, you know, that couldn't possibly be true. We also use legend these days. To talk about someone who's very famous or has become really famous and is a celebrity because of some talent they have, perhaps, or、uh, maybe they have some artistic ability that is just amazing. We'll talk about, for example, Michael Jackson. He's a legend of rock and roll or a legend of pop music, probably pop music. Or maybe Muhammad Ali was a legendary boxer. Here, this、uh, word "legend" is a noun, and it's just、uh, talking about stories that are full of、uh, impossible things, things that aren't true, but that you know are kind of fun and get passed down from generation to generation. Sometimes,、uh, indeed. So that resulted in what many people consider or deem to be the best fantasy book series. Ever written? You decide. You discuss that among yourselves. And what he's saying here is he's just taking the Hobbit world, his Middle Earth legends, and also、uh, the new characters in the Lord of the Rings, and putting them all together or weaving them all together. Yeah, if you read that、uh, series, of course, Bilbo、uh, is in that series at the very beginning, but it's his son, or I think it's his nephew Frodo, who actually becomes the protagonist of the Lord of the Rings. There,、uh, they're trying to return that ring to the land of Mordor, where it came from. They decide they need to destroy it because、mm. it's evil, and people will be tempted by that evil. I don't want to give away the story too much here, but in any case, deem just means consider.、Mm -hmm. They think that. This is the best fantasy book series ever written, or lots of people deem Jin Yong to be the greatest fantasy writer of all time. Hmm. We do use deem. It's not、uh, something that I often hear、um, second language learners use, but we do use it. Just means to regard or consider something in a particular way. Um, he deems himself to be the smartest student in class. So,、uh, yeah, just somebody who considers something a certain way,、um, and it's spelled D E E M. It's a good word to learn, especially if you're a big reader. You'll see this often in literature. So we've got the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings, and it says here they've influenced so many writers、uh, since then that. Uh, Tolkien is now considered the father of modern fantasy literature. Yeah, I can't really think of any books before、uh, The Hobbit and Lord of Rings, Lord of the Rings, that were considered to be, you know, fantasy. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. So it's a pretty amazing title that he has、uh, come up with. He didn't give himself the title. He didn't say, "Oh, I deem myself to be the father of modern fantasy literature."、Um, it's other people who have lived since then、uh, that consider him to be really the father of fantasy literature. Pretty cool to have that title.
Uh, yes, and it also kind of reminds me of fantasy literature that already exists,、uh, like the Ramayana from India and the Bhagavad Gita, and who knows how many、uh, fantasy stories are from Africa and other parts of the world. So if you're into the fantasy genre, there are probably lots of things to pick from.、Yeah. But at least in Western literature,、yeah. uh, Tolkien is considered the father of that、uh, by writing The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, and lots of people have been inf- influenced. Influenced by his stuff here, and he's considered the father of modern fantasy literature. Right now, we're going to listen one more time to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to sign off. 那《魔戒》这本书是怎么产生的？原来啊，出版商想要更多哈比人的故事，所以 Tolkien 呢就把这个故事呢融入中土的故事一起来变化。我们看第三句的地方。This not only 不止点点点，后面还有个 but also 而且啊。好，它不只是 wolf 点点点 into wolf 是 weave 编织的过去式。他把《哈比人》这本书的故事啊，编织到 the Middle Earth legend 中土故事传奇。好 ，The Hobbit 后面还有一个形容词短句来修饰它，动词是 conceive， 它的意思叫做构想出、想出来。后面直接加受词，也可以加个 of， 再加受词 conceive of something。好，哈比人跟中土故事其实是完全不同的故事，但是他们融合在一起。But also, 而且还 result in 导致出 what 是点点点的事情。这是一个 what 名词短句。Many 许多人 deem 是认为，它是一种正式用法，而且比较偏重于自己看待事情的角度。下次同学呢，如果想要表达自己的想法，用认为的时候，不妨用 deem 来取代 think 这个字。以上是今天的讲解，谢谢收听。That's it for today, everybody. But please join us again next time when we come back to the Hobbit and talk about some of the themes and ideas and why we think you might enjoy reading this book. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Bye. Bye.